and it's happened. Oh, I actually feel really sad. It's all over. It's all over. And it's all finished with my Jen Tenson live. Okay, guys, I thought it was last episode, but no. Oh. I think it's this episode. I think this is truly it. This is the end of Not So Very. This is my final ever episode. Or so I believe it is. And oh my gosh, I hate this when you go back to your house and nobody's at school, nobody is at work, everyone's being stressful. We need calm. Calm, nice, meditative vibes because last episode we lost Gordon. And by lost Gordon, I mean we literally lost Gordon. I don't know where he went. I don't know where he's in when he just fully disappeared off the face of the earth. And that was it. Like he truly just was like, goodbye. And he took his leave and off he went into the distance. I don't even know what happened there. You, where are you going? No, you don't need to go to work. You don't need to go to work. You're concerned about your fa- Oh, that's why you're going to work. So Gordon's gone, which means we've just got Liv. Liv's bills are piling up and it seems like there's never enough to go around. Is she kidding me right now? Is she joking? Babes, you can officially retire. Go ahead and make that call right now. Because last episode, we went ahead and added... Ma oh, that's that's made her less stressed. There you go. We went ahead and married Madeline. Oh my gosh, that wedding summed up for me all weddings. That was like how I feel about weddings in The Sims now. It was just stressful, unenjoyable, nothing worked. I was staring at tea poses. I was staring at people not doing what they should be doing. I'm gonna make her get a bubble bath or something. She's stressing me out. It was just altogether not a great experience. However, once we tied the knot officially and we looked at the merging of families, Madeline's family had one million dollars. They were like full on. I don't know if they have an evil empire. I don't know what they have, but what I do know is they had a million simoleons so we split it equally between everyone in that household i think what i ended up getting was like 160,000 simoleons which is absolutely wild we've not taken our wedding dress off yet but honestly they're so beautiful that i don't blame you enjoy your wedding dress while you come are you feeling a bit calmer now babes are we feeling a bit yeah we're just gonna have ourselves a little read crisis barn i mean you <laughs> you were just literally stressed and now you're reading a book about crisis uh, crises I don't even know. Madeline currently does not have a job. I always saw her as a bit of an entrepreneur, but I'm gonna go ahead and like, if you don't have a job, I'll give you one. Go take the dog for a walk, okay? Val has just applied to a bunch of universities. She's hanging out downstairs with Iris. Iris is like, I don't need to do any illegals for a while. This is great. This is honestly just great. Bowen is at his new job as a rescue care assistant in the vet career, which is a mod. It is a mod that I've added. Opal is at school. I'm going to go ahead and get her to make some friends. She's at middle school right now because she's currently a preteen. So she's not aging into a teenage yet. Ooh, Val likes video games. Okay. I'm happy for her to be a preteen for a while because the new high school pack is coming soon and she could be a good candidate. I'm still waiting to see what you guys recommend about whether we add her to the high school pack or not. I don't know what the living arrangements are going to be once Liv goes as well. There's still a lot to decide. So Val, you want to do medicine? Wait, does she want to do medicine? Or does she want to be a scientist? No, she wanted to be a scientist, didn't she? I'm forgetting what everyone wants to do now. I think it was originally Bowen at one point was looking at medicine, but he actually always really wanted to do... He always loved animals, so we decided to put him into the vet one instead. Whereas Val has always really loved... Wait, I got Val and Opal wrong in the last video, didn't I? I said, should we send Val to high school? And I meant Opal. I just can't get their names right. I'm sorry. I just, I just can't do it. But yeah, we wanted to put Val into the science career. And it would also be a really nice kind of like little fold over to the beginning of Not So Very. Because our very first Not So Very was, of course, Minzy. And she was a scientist. So that would have worked out pretty, pretty amazing. So yeah, hopefully we get onto a good science degree. She's applied for university. We're just waiting to hear back from her application. Hopefully that happens in today video because it's the last one so if you want to go to uni kind of got to make it happen and the movie she watched with iris sucked although iris seemed to really like it okay so this is cole this is opal's opal this is opal's friendo he's still a child but i'll probably age him up into a teen if we do decide to use her for the high school pack they were kind of thick as thieves as kids and they also always did like pranks and stuff at school she's kind of a bit of a mischievous kid i know like there's a lot of different ways to do high school do you make like your character like a little bit of like an introverted shy character going to high school like a little bit of max from life is strange sort of situation do you make them popular and make them a joke if i was bringing opal it would be much more like mischievous sneaking out kind of character 
character. That's just kind of like who she is. So that could be quite fun to play as. Oh, and geez, no wonder she found the film boring. Wow, you are so artsy, Iris. Even watching black and white movies of Sims 3. Bless you. And I'm looking at Liv. I'm like, what things do you want to do? You've, wow, you're old. You're enjoying this film. You've kind of achieved everything you wanted in life. You have got the anxious trait as an elder, but I mean, there is a lot to be anxious about. One of your children is literally a, a werewolf. So I can kind of understand it. But she's responsible, a caregiver. She's a role model. Morning Sim, but also a night owl. <laughs> she is compassionate, domestic. She's kind of achieved everything she wanted. She wanted a big, happy family and she definitely achieved that. She also managed to fix her marriage as well after initially being not the greatest uh, partner in the whole world. And now she's surrounded by this big loving, happy family, which is really nice as well. She reached the top of her critic career. She also once destroyed a restaurant in reviews, felt bad, but then went ahead and like taught the guy how to cook properly to save his restaurant. So generally she's done so much amazingness in her life. I can't think of anything that she hasn't achieved. She also went back to Tartosa for Bowen's wedding. So she got like a nice little view of her childhood as well. The only thing that would have been nice is if I knew where Gordon was, I could like summon him, but he's just, he's fully disappeared off the face of the earth. Cause I would like to like reminisce and like, I don't know, mourn him a little bit, but I guess I'm not getting that chance. But I can make you sit in here and reminisce. Maybe you can do like a final knitting project you know look that is i mean that is a happy sim look at this she's remembering all of her children's birthdays she just looks so blissful and happy she's remembering maybe her own childhood or maybe her kids childhoods i'm not sure yeah, you never went this is a lie oh. maybe remembering past generations that have done that eh, maybe there was a bit of this i don't know but either way she looks she looks very happy doesn't she i wish these actually showed real memories that they'd had that would be so cool, right? Like a little picture of her and Gordon getting married or like when her first baby was born and that kind of thing. That would be really cute. It's saying that she is currently 96. Will she get to 100? Well, I guess we might find out today. Iris's birthday is also today as well. Oh my gosh, zero days until aging up. Luckily, I have a cake ready to go. So I'll go ahead and pop that on the counter. Why can't I add candles? Has somebody taken a piece? Someone's taken a piece, haven't they? Oh, well, I guess I'm making a cake as well. And look at this. She remembered the good times. A little granny down here. She is a grandma now as well. I'm heading to the Spice Festival to try some pho. Would you like to join? I actually, I'm just in my little rocking chair vibing out right now. But why don't you guys come over here for Iris's birthday instead? Okay, I've got Opal learning some lines because she's in the drama club at school. So she's acquired the acting skills. She does want to become a master actor, master actress one day because acting is kind of just lying to people and getting away with it. So she likes that a lot. You've still not taken off off your wedding cake. Fair play to you. Fair play. I was like, what? What's the stinkiness here? It's actually just a glass of milk. <laughs> so the little, oh, the little stinkies are here. Stinkying things up everywhere. Okay, great. <laughs> Yay. Where are the rest of the stinkies? The stinkies are the grandchildren. Okay, one stinky here. One stinky here. Final stinky is wrecking in here. Okay, so glad we got three stinkies here. But birthday candles are on. Iris is her second eldest. Her first is Rain. But I'll go ahead and get her to blow out the candles and age her up. She also hasn't invited around girlfriend Rosemary. I'm just not feeling it with those two anymore. I feel like it was a nice... Oh, where'd she go? <laughs> Where did she go? Gordon sent us a gift, but how when he has no physical form? I don't know. Oh, wow. You aged up and it teleported you outside. Nice. I'm just kind of like, I don't know. The spark with those two seems to have gone. So I'm actually going to invite her around. Like she's a year older. She's now an adult rather than a young adult. And she's like, I need to make some decisions of what I want to do with the rest of my life. I think one of her things is she's going to break up with Rosemary or who's come around fuming probably because she didn't get invited to the cake ceremony and just be like, look, I feel like our relationship has run its course. There's nothing particularly wrong with us. I just don't really feel... Oh my gosh, now she's kicking our bin. Jeez, okay. Us to just be friends. There we go. You know, there's nothing particularly wrong in our relationship. I just feel like we've not had the spark in a while and we're just not really on the same page and also you're kind of angry right now. I don't know. I just, I felt like this about these two for a while. I'm hoping they can remain friends, but as for like the romance part of their relationship... I think that spark has died out. What is this cuteness happening here? Adorable babies. And oh my gosh, the dog's in the bin. Bowen, you're meant to be training the dog. Okay, that didn't improve her mood whatsoever. But I still think it was the right thing to do. And now we have a little birthday cake. And the problem with having a big family is you've got a lot of people coming over to get a slice of cake. It means that not everyone will get one. You've got to be fast. You've got to be faster than that, Aruna. You've got to be speedy if you want some cake. Rain is not having cake. He's like... 
Cake to me does not sound like a big old slab of raw meat. Why did they not think of me? Could they not have just mashed some mince together and put a bit of ice in on top? I'd have eaten that. Yeah, he's not impressed at all. Ooh, and Luna is getting quite close to transforming. Luna, go easy. She's also not eating the cake. I also feel like the baby wolves are more just throwing their cake around rather than actually eating it. But like mother and father, like daughters, apparently. However, this one is the only one who isn't actually a werewolf. They don't fully know that yet. But he is finally like, yes! Cooked food! Amazing! Oh, and after making her spend some time with her little grandkids, I got a pristine reputation. She really is just completing everything, isn't she? And oh my gosh, it was a good time to end things. It was a really good time to end things. Off you go, Rain. Goodbye as well. Oh, jeez, it was, yeah. I think he's gonna zoom me away. I wish the werewolf's fury didn't build up as fast as it does, because I feel like my werewolves are just constantly werewolves, or maybe I just put them in a situation that causes them to be werewolves, but... Yeah, he's off. I'm glad you waited. Perfect timing. Genuinely, absolutely perfect timing. If you kick my bin over again, I swear to God, I will dump you twice. I will dump you twice. Okay, I'm so glad I did that breakup. So glad. <gasps> Liv Berry's long life is coming to an end. It would be a good time to get her affairs in order. She's come downstairs to have... Oh, wow, everyone's down here. Oh my gosh, Luna. Luna and her fury are still here. And Opal isn't sure what she wants to be when she grows up. How do I figure myself out? You've got, like, you're a preteen, babes. You've got lots of time. Don't even worry about that yet. <gasps> and Opal is now officially a teen. Has she got taller? She looks really tall down there. She looks really tall, actually. Is she a long girl? I feel like she's quite a long girl. She's not done her homework. Or finished her lines, and she's up at 3 a.m. washing a dog. <laughs> okay, so she's officially ready for the next pack. That was good timing, you know? Okay, so it's Saturday today, which is good because it said I have to get my affairs in order and I feel like... Oh, she's woken up and peed herself. Oh, she's old. Oh, nice. 750 pounds a day. I will take that. It's good because I feel like to get our affairs in order, we have to decide like what we're doing with everything. Like who gets the house? How are the kids going to split things? Like we need to know these things, you know? Oh, and our scholarship result was in. Wait, for Bowen? <laughs> what? I applied for the scholarship. What the hell? Oh! <gasps> And boom! Okay, our acceptance letter is in as well. Now, I want her to study science. Something science-y that she can go into the science career. She also already has like a bunch of rocket science skill just from using the telescope outside. But I think her logic needs upping a little bit. Oh, Bowen throwing little confetti on her cute heads. So I'm going to get Val to go ahead and enroll. Ooh, and she got onto the distinguished degrees as well. If I go to Foxbury, I can do a distinguished degree in physics. And I feel like that kind of makes the most sense to her, right? She wants to go into the scientist career. She could also be a space ranger too. Okay, that's really cool. Whereas if I go Brichester, it's not distinguished. Yeah, there's nothing that... Re yeah, it, it's 100% this one for her. She could do biology, which also helps her out with like some of this more science-y focused careers. But... I feel like she's more of a physicist. I really get physicist vibes from her. So what I'm going to do is I don't want her to leave for university whilst, you know, we've still got Liv and she'll just like miss Liv's death completely. Although I don't know if it's just going to make it disappear again. I don't know yet. So I'm going to get her to do two classes this term and then other two classes. I only do four classes to graduate because otherwise university is too long. It's a mod, by the way, that I used to do that. So her first two classes she'll do from home. I also get her to do secret herbalism because it's kind of interesting. So we'll do two core classes one elective and then the second trimester she will move out to university she could even move into elysium manor which is of course the halls that clem set no no clem briar briar set these up i think that's what i will do with her that's what her plan is that's her affairs in order but i don't want her to miss out on her mum. so let's keep her at home for now and she got a merit scholarship. And honestly, we can easily pay this with household funds. Wow. So well done, Val. You now are a physics student, you little brain box. And oh my gosh, she is so freaking tall. Look at her height compared to Bowen. <gasps> She's a long girl. Wow. Okay, I'm going to get her to keep uh, learning her lines. Madeline has somehow managed to hurt her Achilles heel on a dog walk. I didn't even send her for a jog. I literally just sent her for a walk and she's managed to sprain her ankle. Good job. Good job. So I'm asking like Val what she wants to do, her future plans. And just kind of been like, I'm so proud of you for getting into university. Oh my gosh, does anybody get the school spirit day come up like 50,000 times, by the way? Look at this. 
I don't know why it does that, but it's so annoying. Look how many I have to click off. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna have to do this. So that's one child sorted. Our other child is still just kind of, well, none of my children anymore, really. But, you know, Opal's still figuring things out. She's a teen. She doesn't need to know yet. We've already told her she's got a bunch of time. And she is feeling like irritated as a teenager just being around her family. So that's kind of, you know, to be expected. Bowen, I'm going to congratulate on his marriage. And also just like ask him what his future plans are too. Ask about future plans. Because he's married now. Like, are those guys thinking of starting a family yet? I honestly think no, because Madeline has the does not want a child right now. She also has the hates children trait. So maybe a child isn't so much on their cards. However, Bowen kind of had a big part in, like, helping raise Val. So maybe he's got that out of his system. Maybe it made him want kids even more. I don't know. But I do think when anything happens to Liv, Minzy, our doggo, has to go to Bowen. It's definitely, like, very much his dog. And he's in the veterinary career as well. So if anything ever went wrong, he'd be able to help out. And then we've got our current eldest in the house, Iris. I'm going to ask her about her future plans because obviously she's just broken up with her, like her long-term girlfriend. Wow, why does she do like a really weird turn to turn to face me there? I could also teach her to knit. Oh, that's kind of cute. She is artsy. I think she would love to learn how to knit. Her ex is like, oh, congrats on your birthday. You never know. They may get back together after some time apart. Oh my gosh, Opal is so freaking tall. Why is she so tall? I genuinely don't know. I'm wondering if I changed her height in cast to get a thumbnail picture because she was too small. Um, and I forgot to change her back. And that's why she's like the ultimate long girl because she's actually as tall as a person can be. She's all limbs right now. I might have to shrink her back down again. <laughs> but yeah, we're kind of asking Iris what her plans are. I think Iris, although she's the like eldest currently living at home. So Liv would be like, do you want to stay in this house? I actually think Iris wouldn't. I think Iris ne needs a fresh Irish. I think Irish. I think Iris needs a fresh start. I think she wants to go pursue her artwork. Maybe the slightly criminal kind i don't know but this doesn't feel like the right place to do it oh my gosh cole is really missing her being a, a child with him isn't he he's missing opal so much but yeah i think maybe a move to a different place would be good for iris i'm thinking either like you know the place with the eco living park and like living somewhere around there or move into the city would be the best for her so i don't think she wants to stay in the house she'll take some of the money that we've now got in the household funds it's like a well we had 20,000 pounds anyway. So she could take like 10 or 20,000 pounds, go get herself a starter house and begin her own like steps in life. Not feeling like she has to look after parents anymore, but instead, you know, bringing her artwork with her. Maybe continuing this series and trying to find love in a whole new place. I think that's the right move for her, which means Bowen and Madeline will stay in this house with Minzy. So it'll be those three in this house with Minzy. And then I guess Opal can decide who she'd rather live with. If she'd rather live here at home with Bowen and with Madeline, although Madeline doesn't love children. <laughs> or would she rather move with Iris? And I don't know, maybe Iris would want a fresh start in the new neighborhood. And it could just be those two, Iris trying to find love and a new career in the new neighborhood and opal going with her and iris happens to deal with opal <laughs> good luck with that one but yeah i think that's the plan so bowen madeline here with doggo iris and opal iris has promised to look after opal and try her best to steer her so those guys will be moving and leaving for a new neighborhood rain is already moved out and val will be moving to university so we've definitely got everything in order she'll finish her term off here living with bowen which again Again, makes total sense and then she'll do her next term on campus so Liv I think your affairs are definitely in order at this point and your bar is most definitely glowing and Opal has acquired the mischief skill great yay and she is feeling anxious and she isn't quite sure why Maybe she can feel death tapping on her shoulder, but she's like, I'm not quite ready yet. I feel like she'd be like, my family, like, who's going to cook all their lovely meals for them? Like, they already can cook at this point. She's kind of taught all of them, but I feel like she'll be panicking about that. So she's like, oh, guys, can you help me, like, just fill the fridge? Like, I just want to stock the fridge. Do you guys want to cook together? Which I think they totally will. So she can cook them some of her, like, most impressive recipes. Tuna casserole sounds so gross. I'm not cooking that. 
Veggie casserole sounds way nice. So let's do that instead. So this is cute. Everyone in the kitchen together. Helping out with a little bit of cooking. Opal even getting very involved with her big long legs. And just kind of surrounded by family. We've even got rain calling for a chart. Cute big family all surrounding us, which makes sense because the family at this point is really freaking huge. There's a lot of them. So this is nice. I like this a lot. Even if I've got a creak in my back. This is good because Val's learning a bit of gourmet cooking before she heads off to uni. Not that I think she'll be doing a great deal of gourmet cooking at uni, but at least we're teaching her some skills before we go. Oh, it's going to be so sad. I don't know how long she's got left, but we're trying to cook as many meals as we can. We've got veggie casserole. Gonna go ahead and pop that in the fridge. In fact, I think the fridge is already quite full as well. She's pretty good at keeping a stocked fridge in this house. Yeah, we got a bunch of things in there, but we will keep adding to it. And it's good because she didn't really know Madeline that well before. But now, like, look, her relationship's going up with her. And like everybody else, it's like full, full bar, full bar, full bar. Full bar. Luna, she doesn't know as well, but Luna and Rain kind of have to stay away for obvious reasons. She got to know her little grandkids fairly well. Her favorite was like Aeon. And she's just surrounded by love, you know? Doctor visit needed. Okay, you need to go to the doctors about your uncle, Madeline. And go easy walking the dog in future. I don't know what you were doing, but you were clearly being hectic. And okay, she has to go to a hospital for repair procedure. Wow, okay. Okay, good luck, Madeline. We didn't mean to injure you so soon after arriving at the household. So everyone else has kind of drifted off to do their own thing. But Iris has stuck around to help us cook, which is cute because Liv used to always cook with her dad. Although they're arguing about something, but mothers and daughters do. Whereas now, like, her daughter's sticking and cooking with her. I'm trying to cook, like, as many things as possible just to fill this fridge because I feel like that's what Liv would do. And we've got a pretty uh, tasty selection of food so far, I have to say. Look at all this. They're definitely not going to be going hungry for a while. That's for sure. Ooh, it all looks so tasty as well. Ooh, well done. But she is getting a little bit sleepy now. She's an elder, so she can't go for quite as long as normal. Let's fill this fridge full of foodies. And she wants to head to sleep. Hopefully it's not the big sleep, the long sleep. But she's off to go get some rest. This room, I guess, will become Bowen's room with Madeline. They'll probably want to redo it because it's their parents' bedroom, you know? It's kind of like you'd, you'd want to do that, I think. But yeah, she's heading for a little sleepy. Iris, we'll have to get you on some dating ups when you move to a new place, okay? And I'm gonna get her to adopt Opal as a care dependent as well, just because that's what her mother's wishes are. So it makes sense. So now technically Opal is her dependent. So if anything does happen, and she adores her, cute. If anything does happen to mom, then everything's in place. All affairs are in order. I don't think I've ever been this organized before a sim has died, ever. <gasps> and it's happened. Oh my gosh, she just... I, it was the long sleep. I knew when she went to bed, that would be it. She's like, my family is fed. And oh my gosh, thank God we actually got to see the animation. I was really worried that it wouldn't do it. <gasps> Val discovered her and Minzy the dog. Okay, everyone's realizing. Everyone's realizing what's happened. Oh, I actually feel really sad. It's all over. It's all over and it's all finished with my Gen 10 sim. Liv. I'm so glad we spent the whole episode with her, like, figuring things out and focusing on her. But yeah, guys, the circle of life plays in from birth to, to natural death. Liv has lived a long life, but her time has finally come. She is dying of old age. And Madeline's surgery, at least, was successful. But yeah, everyone, this is... Oh, he's thinking about children. Bowen, don't do that, babes. You can't do that. You can't do that. Your wife doesn't like children. Oh, God. But yeah, guys, I hope you have enjoyed Liv. Because that is the end. Her prescription has now expired. She died and left a portion to all of her family. Well, we already figured all that out. And yeah, there is Liv Very. I'm going to go ahead. Can I put her urn anywhere? Can she like rest on anything? Can she like go up here maybe? Yeah, let's pop her up here next to Tofu. And yeah, a very very sad household but not actually as sad as it could be because genuinely we left our affairs so perfectly in order that you know they're sad they're feeling down but they also it was a really nice final day they spent the whole time cooking with her and yeah guys that is it that is it we have completed a not so very legacy we did gen 1 mint we did rose yellow gray plum orange pink peach, green, and now blue as well, which was to finish and stay with them until you die, which 
is exactly what we did. So thank you so much to Kayla and Zoe, Lil Simsy and Always Simming for creating this amazing challenge. Thank you, you guys, for suggesting it as well. I've had so much fun. Let's have a last look at our little family tree. And let's go right back to the start because my family tree at this point is really huge, which is why the save file is a little bit dodgy. But we started with Minsim, Minzy, who was our scientist, that we've repeated those steps in this gen. She had four children, but we went ahead and picked Scott as our Gen 2, a feisty presidential sim. She only had the one child who was Saffron, who became a space ranger. She never was interested in humans on Earth, but when she went to space and met her alien lover, she knew it was meant to be and ended up having Ash, who was our half alien amazing parent sim. She had a tough life. Her first love obviously um, died. She raised his twins and looked after them amazingly and then met Satch Sam and had two children of her own. Surin and Lila. Lila, who became an actress, she found love with Molly and had triplets. One who, which was genetically hers, which was Clem. Clem, who was our amazing, really fun sim to play. She was our criminal. She went around and beat up all people. She lived in all places in the world and she kind of very badly ran a criminal empire and had two twins. One who was a sweet, amazing blossom and one was Coral, who knew exactly what his parents were up to. He became a famous author and had three children of his own. Lily, Robin, and Kai. Robin, who we picked as our next heir, who went away and had three children of her own. Uh, triplets are quite common, or like three children at least. Zane, Forrest, and Briar. Briar and Forrest being twins. We picked Briar as our next gen. Briar went ahead and had Liv as her only child. She wanted more children, but unfortunately it just wasn't to be for them. So Liv grew up as an only child, and maybe that's why she ended up having so many children. Five, the most of any that we've had so far. Minzy was four, but Liv like one up to handed five. So we've got Rain, our eldest, who's moved out and is now in our werewolf series. If you're not watching that, it's been a lot of fun so far. His little sister, Iris, who is going to be moving out with the youngest, Opal. Those guys are going to be exploring a new neighborhood. And then Bowen, who is now married and will stay in the house with Val, who will be heading off to university. So I actually, this is Gen 11. I made it to Gen 12, technically, because we've got triplets with Rain. So 12 generations all in one story. And I can't believe it's all over. Have you guys enjoyed it as much as I have? I really, really hope you have. I want to know who your favorite gen was. I've actually really enjoyed Liv. I like a Sims story where the Sim isn't like this perfect angel. They're actually kind of morally gray and that's definitely how we played Liv, although she did end up much, much more good in the end. I also enjoyed Minzy because she's my first Sim. It was just so fun like starting this challenge off. I liked the grind of Saffron. I liked the the cheekiness of Scala. I don't know. I just love so many of these characters. I really liked playing Ash. Ash's parenting probably helped me think a little bit about children in real life. And there's just so much fun. There is so much fun we've had in this challenge. It's kind of ending at a good time as well. Because as you guys know, I have my own challenge ahead of me starting very soon in October where I'm expanding my own family tree. It's not quite as big as this at the moment. But yeah, Ali and I will be welcoming a little baby inside. Do you want to see a little bump? <laughs> a little baby into our family in October. So it's kind of come at a good time because I'm starting to definitely feel a little bit tired and a little bit like I've got a lot of planning to do for that. So this challenge ending has come at a really good time, which is why I won't be continuing the Not So Berry. But I will be checking out the high school park potentially with Opal and Rain is in Werewolves. If you guys do want to continue with this family and with the stories, you can go ahead and check out those two challenges. But thank you guys so much for sticking with me for such a long time. We've been doing this challenge for over a year and there is over 100 episodes and I had so much fun. A big thank you for sticking with me and hanging out with me for so long. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have and for the final time, goodbye from my Not So Very Challenge. Bye guys!